picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. Well, good morning and welcome. Uh, this is week four. four week four on the uh, Reliant build. And uh, we're down to the boring puttying and sanding and, you know, sanding and puttying part before we put some paint on it. And we're starting to, uh, it's starting to hit me now, the uh, actual problems of scale on this thing. This is not only a very heavy ship, but this is a very big ship. And you can't just pick it up like I did. You can't just pick it up and paint it. It's, a, it's too big for my paint, my spray booth. Um, so a lot of it's going to have to be done either in small stages or uh, outside even because it is uh, not the easiest thing. Man, is this heavy. That metal plate in there is really adding some weight to it. Um, but, uh, but finding the desk space to, to lay it down and be able to work on it is, is going to be the treat for this week. So... Uh, Without much ado, let's uh, let's get started on it. Okay, I've just turned it on its back and doing some sanding, and I hooked the power up to it again just to check for light leaks. And I'm getting some where I expect to, uh, where I've been doing some heavy sanding, and that'll tell me where, when I start putting the top coats of paint, where I need to concentrate. But it's also uh, confirming that the windows that I've got blocked uh, they're all coming back up once I take the uh, tape off of them. So those are coming up nice. And, um, yeah, everything's looking pretty good here. Uh, do some more sanding. Obviously, here's the spot where I had to break and uh, reattach that pylon. So it's going to get a lion's share of the work. But these guys are coming out very smooth. Very happy with these. Uh, there's some spots here, 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 and here. And then right down the length there where there are raised panels that sit on the seam and I'm thinking I just want to cut some new uh, sheets, some new strip stock and just put them over top of these uh, to level those back up and uh, sharpen up the corners and stuff like that so uh, going pretty good uh, blending this area in on both sides is the main key on the bottom uh, where the resin piece meets the uh, kit saucer bottom that was always going to be a spot to uh, to look after and to blend in and the same thing is happening here where uh, I will sand this down and fill this crack in a little bit more there are no kit parts to cover that seam there so uh, sanding and puttying and puttying and sanding okay not much else getting done today on Reliant I did get some replacement uh, plates put in here on both sides and of course those will be covered up with paint and you won't see them uh, a lot of sanding on this uh, uh, putty on both sides of the uh, both sides of the broken wing and I'm letting this uh, putty plastic putty dry up really well because it seems to take a whole lot longer than your normal uh, bondo to dry up that is the uh, Vallejo plastic putty and I'm letting that uh, set up so uh, yeah just taking little short nips and bobs around it and uh, we'll see how uh, where we where we get done tomorrow it's Tuesday and the Reliant is still on its back um, the weather outside is <laughs> I'm gonna say the weather outside is frightful uh, it is uh, windy and rains every other second so uh, I cannot take this out to put another coat of primer over the sanded bits so I'm going around with ever increasingly small files and just cleaning up bits here and there but uh, I'm really to the point where I'm stymied by the weather so I took the opportunity to work on another tiny little side project yep here it is I'm one of my my own very own Nostromo t-shirt always wanted one of these I was given a file to uh, do the lettering at the right size and on the right arc so I would I just made myself one in vinyl and uh, went to Michael's and picked up a gray t-shirt they did not have any khaki t-shirts like I was looking for but uh, not bad for a little 15 minute project well good morning it is uh, Wednesday today and um, it looks like we might be getting a break from the uh, rain uh, maybe for the next couple of days so uh, 
that'll be great and I've got this guy sanded the bottom of which at least so I want to get another coat of primer on the uh, sanded bits and the and the bondoed bits and um, then we can flip it over and start touching up the top okay I've got this flipped back over and on the stand because that seems to be the best way to go and um, uh, when it comes time to take this outside and paint it, I will throw a towel over that to keep it from getting uh, dirty. But um, I'm ready to put one last coat of the sealer, of the gray sealer on. And then everything from here on out will be uh, white. I'll put a, maybe get a white coat on here today of the uh, white sandable primer. Wouldn't that be fun? And here we are, Wednesday evening. And, uh, of course, it's raining again. They They promise that it will uh, stop eventually but uh i'll wait to see for, uh, see that for myself i did get a coat of gray on top and bottom on the reliant the last coat of gray um i did see a spot where i had to touch up with a little bit more putty but everything else from now on will be white uh white primers the reliant itself is a much cleaner paint job than the enterprise was didn't have all of those multicolored flips and flops it wasn't overly fancy it uh, it was more more white it was actually a whiter ship there's a famous picture of the building crew standing around the completed model and the ship itself is much whiter in that shot um, so uh, there there's blue predominantly there's blue a duck egg blue really uh, uh, gray and white, uh, very light grays, but those are your main colors. You got blues that go in here uh, on the leading edges of things. You've got grays that go around here and in these two uh, features, those are predominantly grays. There's the, the light blues, that duck egg blue, that is the stripes. Um, I don't know how, six, these stripes are, are a madhouse on uh, on the kit as far as how well they were sculpted in and uh, on the saucer they're not much better but uh, you have some light blue uh, over in here and on this detail um, so it, there, there's plenty of color of course the shuttle bay doors are, are this light blue as well so there is the opportunity to get color in here but I think the next thing is going to be to uh, do the last bit of pointing up and then hit it with a white sandable primer and then we can go over it with light grays and whites and things like that start laying in this uh, new Aztec uh, pattern which I'm eager to get started on but uh, that's it for this rainy evening we'll see how well the rest of the week goes kids it is Thursday afternoon and uh, yes the Reliant has a white primer coat on it and we're ready to uh, start getting down to the actual painting uh didn't uh didn't cover everything completely with the white because i wanted some of the gray underneath to act like a uh, pre-shade um but i think we're going to start with it on its back like this because it's handy because it paints well this way and um we are going to start laying it now before i put any of the blue or the gray on I'm gonna to try to get as much of the white done so yeah I'll be flipping it back and forth as I do a whole white pass on this and then I'll start painting in the detail stuff but um, I'm kind of itching to get into Aztec on this I think uh, now that I've got the white and I'm, I went through a can of white primer a big rattle can of white primer and now I can since I don't have to worry about covering so much the paint doesn't have to work as hard I can go in with the Tamiyas and whatnots and, and uh, first I'm, I'm going to do a gray pass or a light gray pass here because I don't want uh, any of the uh, temple any of the Aztecs to be completely completely bright white like this so uh, I think I'm going to do a, a light gray pass on the uh, saucer section here now like I said before um, it's not textured all over like uh, oh like the Enterprise E or uh, um, trying to think or the uh, the JJ Enterprise or anything any of the starships you've seen in the last 20 years this was painted in the 80s this was painted what I'm imagining 1981 for an 82 movie movie came out in 82 83 so uh yeah this was done maybe as early as 1980 they started working on this thing so um uh, paint 
was not as sophisticated back then, I will go ahead and say it. So uh, they weren't doing elaborate paint jobs on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask this area off just where the saucer is, the traditional part of the saucer, and uh, gray it up a bit. Okay, interruption here for a color note. These are pictures of the Reliant model at the Christie's auction. Probably the best universal lighting you will see. And you can tell by looking at this that there is, you know, here's your whites and your uh, Aztecs and all of that. And then there's this sky blue color, almost a robin's egg blue color, right up in here. And then there's the gray color for the inserts. Hey, you notice? I cut mine right there at the same spot, just about. I, no, I think I cut mine back there. Anyway, great minds and all that. But you've got, the, you've got this light blue, and you've got this gray. Um, I've seen this blue um, turned into almost an intermediate blue, uh, a lot darker blue uh, on some kits and some bills, and I, I kind of tend towards that. I don't know whether I am. This is something I didn't notice before either. The blue behind the uh, bridge there. Um, I don't know how original that is because we all know this kit's been uh, changed many, many, many times for uh, to act as different ships. So I don't know whether that was something that was touched up uh, for our later use. But um, I don't know how wild I am about this bright blue. I may go for something in between that and the intermediate blue, which I think is too dark. Um, the the Tamiya intermediate blue. So I think I'm going to, I may try a couple different color variations before I decide whether that's going to be for me. But you can see the area around the crystal that needs to be painted. Um, the inside of the door, this little detail down here. I'm sorry, you may not be able to see my cursor. This little detail down here, all of that. Uh, the edge banding on the front and the back. You can't really see it here on the front. But then this inset is the gray color. It's the same color as the uh, color on these trenches. So you've got the trench color going here. It's also the um, color that's in the uh, insets on the uh, roll bar. It's also the color that's on the inset band on the front of the BC decks. Um, like I said, there's only two or three main colors and um, now this was this was set up for lighting for an, a lighting effect for inside the uh, torpedo launchers. I may end up blackening my insides of my torpedo launchers out because I'm not putting any lighting in there. And rather than leaving the blue, I think I may want to you know just black those out. Uh, but yeah, you can see where I'm trying to get my uh, color variations here. We got the. Uh, the blue bits going down the uh, those are not black inserts like you would imagine those are blue inserts so there's something to learn but yeah that's where I'm getting this picture and yeah, this is the other picture that one before and then this picture using for particularly the uh, detail on the tops of the nacelles this area right in here which has that duck egg blue uh, these look to be darker blue rather than black, so I, I'm I am toying with what I what color those are going to be. This looks more like a gunmetal than a black, so I'm going to do gunmetal in there, um, inside the trench there, or inside this bit of more of this blue color. Um, there's a there's a leading edge on the front of the pylon, which makes sense because you got these inserts here. I don't know if I'm going to try doing the stripes. Um, because those would go all up and all the way around the front of the uh, saucer and back. We'll have to see how involved that's going to be. But those, these are my two main color reference pictures. You can see uh, part of uh, the type of Aztec that's going on in here. It looks like there is a bit of a light blue pass that I might try adding some of that in there. But it looks to be more... Uh, yeah, that area up in there, you get a flavor for what the uh, Aztec looks like up there. Okay, here's a good uh, stopping place for today. I'm going to let these uh, tones dry in. And then, um, well, maybe I say for today, for right now. It's, uh, what, it's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. I may do a little bit more on this this evening, but... Uh, 
this is a good place to uh, let it lay and then I can come back in and start putting the Aztec templates on it and uh, take it from there but I think you can see the variation from the uh, the white trim or the white areas and I'm going to keep white uh, well not this bright but you know what I'm saying um, the gray is starting to work into the white primer well good morning and welcome back my friends to the show that never ends it is Friday yay and we are starting we are starting the Aztec -ing. dun 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 of the bottom of the saucer and my goal for today is to get this done and painted and so you will see that it is not that scary of a thing to do uh, it's a matter of finding your sticking point which to me is always front center edge right up front right out you know the tippy tump right out here and just start working backwards you take one piece one piece my friend and it will do both of these uh, sections and then you simply work yourself around um, you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself about and that's what it's all about uh, so I'm going to continue to lay these up and show you how this goes and uh, then we will get on to the painting now this is not going to be something I can do in five minutes but it doesn't have to take you know you don't have to make a career out of it although ironically I think I have um, but let's get on with it You'll notice how how much simpler this pattern is uh, on the Reliant than it is uh, on the uh, Refit. It's uh, squat. I think personally, I think it's the folks at ILM uh, when they looked at the Refit and they said, "Well, we're not going to do that. Uh, we'll make something similar and make it a little bit easier to do." So they cut down the intricacy of the shape and um, the amount of colors that they put on. So enough jabbering. Let's get this done. Okay, and there you go. Now, this took me about 10 minutes, and I wasn't rushing, uh, uh, taking my time going through it. Now, I've probably done this more than most of you out there. Uh, so, I, you know, with with practice becomes ease. Um, but really, that's about 10 minutes worth of work. So, you know, I can probably get this done. If I work constantly, uh, I could probably get this done in a little over an hour, but uh, not going to. Uh, take your time don't you know it's a hobby it's not a job uh, take your time take a break between things if you have to but uh, uh, I shouldn't have any problem finishing this out uh, this morning at least and uh, getting ready to put some paint on it this afternoon it works continuing on the bottom of the Reliant uh, saucer and I want to point out what you do when you come to something like this uh, you do nothing basically what I'm going to do is continue the overall uh, Aztec pattern over as much of this as possible. Now I did cut out around these raised phaser banks, but that's just good thinking because you've got to, uh, or else the rest of the template won't lay flat. But when you come to these types of panels, where it's some a panel that that spans uh, a sec a whole section, what I'm going to do is just continue to paint in this pattern, and then I'll come back with some straight tape and just paint this out separately. Uh, after the template or after the overall Aztec pattern is done. We've got that these four Plus we've got like these long ones here And there are some other weird little panels and you can decide for yourself how much of that you want to do but I know that At least these four and perhaps these two back here will be painted out uh, in separate color but it's just easier just to keep laying it in place and then go back and treat it later than to try to trim it all out now. I think it's a bit premature. Well, I was moving along and all of a sudden the knock on the door and it was the friendly mailman bringing mail call. And uh, that means my lighting has gotten here. Now, I get my uh, strip lights from Paul Paragraphics. Not just, photogra not just photo etch, my friends, but also a wonderful source for strip lighting. Uh, he does the... Uh, what are called the HDs. These are double density. Uh, usually you see uh, three of these in like two inches of material and this is like three of them per inch. So uh, the uh, this will keep me in lighting for a while. It's, I generally let it go down to where I have nothing left and then I make a big order. So uh, I got some warm white, some cool white, some blue, some red, some yellow. So uh, you should set me up for quite a while. So thank you, Paul. And now back to the Azteking already in progress. As you can see, I am 
working my way out from both sides and I'll work around to the back but uh, it's going very well going very quickly I've got them all but this last section done and I've, I've, I've put in an extra wedge for that purpose so even if you don't use it for that and you may need to replace a part somewhere along in here you can um, but basically what I'm going to do is put the side bit down that needs to go and then just trim it along that flat edge rather than trying to wrap it up over over this piece I, mean, I can since that's a straight edge just cut it um, but then we'll be ready for the next coat of paint okay I, you can see where I made it a little bit easier on myself by pre-cutting parts that I knew I wasn't going to need the whole piece of and got those in place kind of wrapped them over the tape a little bit in some spots but uh, let me see it is coming up on one o'clock now I started this at 10 and I did not by any means put my head down and try to do a speed record so I'm taking my leisurely time uh, got up got the mail things like that so uh, that's a couple of hours couple maybe two and a half hours to do all of that but now I am ready to put the second layer of paint on and uh, I'm going to go with uh, these grays here are kind of warmish. I'm going to go with a cool gray over this time so that what is left is a warm cool gray uh, opposition and then we'll uh, see how it goes from there but yeah it doesn't take forever. All right I am back. I uh, Went out and mowed the front yard. Uh, had to do it. Needed to be done, so, you know, nobody else around here to kick and tell them to go do it. So, i got to do it myself. So, now I'm going to put the, the top coat over the uh, templates. And uh, let's quit stalling and get to doing. Alrighty. Um, went over it with a coat of mostly, mostly flat white with some light gray in it. And the light gray is a cool gray as opposed to the sky gray which I used the first time which is a warm gray so hopefully we'll see some difference in there and then um, used most of that up and then what little bit was left I put more white into it and just did some uh, what I call carding I just did some you know take a flat edge and sprayed some uh, light lighter tones of the white in there and of course these will dry down they're they're not going to ever be that uh, that stark but it's a good it's a good uh, place to leave it because um, when all these come off and I paint in the um, well when, firstly when these come off I'll do a blending coat which will be uh, a very light misting of the white with just a you know just the tiniest of a drop of a gray in it and uh, that will um, blend the the contrast down a little bit but it will um, give me a good base to start from then I can go in and paint the uh, individual um, hatches that I want to put in but yes you still see a lot of yellow because the idea wasn't that I was going to cover up everything with a you know a plastering of the uh, of the white on here or the light light gray just adding some more flavors to the rainbow Okay, hopefully you can't see it because I don't want it to be that noticeable. But I just went over with a very, very, very haphazard and uh, light spritzing of the iridescent that I used on the uh, Kelvin. Maybe if I zoom in, you can see it. See, it's a little bit iridescent there. And uh, just a random spritz. So we'll see what this looks like when I... Uh, take these masks when I take these masks off to uh, to quote the Dark Lord and um, I promise to do that before I close up today okay it's had time to dry so uh, let's take these templates off okay everything is unwrapped I have mixed opinions about it parts of it I like parts of it I don't care about that much and I gotta tell you it is because I don't think I made the initial gray dark enough that forced me to put too much of the lighter color on to give me the contrast that I was looking for and it made everything lighter so there was a reason I started on the bottom of the saucer I was trying to do lessons learned so that I can uh, apply those lessons learned to the top of the saucer um, 
Still need to do a blending coat on it. Still need to put some, and I think I'll put some dark, uh, I hate to use the word highlights, accents. I may put some darker accents in here. Uh, I certainly need to do some of the blues and whatnot, but um, uh, I'm going to sit with this now. I did have, I'll show it to you right there, I did have one spot where the paint peeled up. And the reason that paint peeled up is me. It was not the templates, it was me. I got cocky because everything was going so well that I just started going faster and faster and took it for granted. And that's something, it's like a, 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 a template is like a shark. You, know, you can pet it, you can love it, but you don't turn your back on it because it could come around to bite you. So uh, what I'm going to do just for giggles is I'm going to put these four colored panels in and then uh, I'll mist a uh, white over the whole thing. See how well it blends. Well, that's looking a little bit better. I think I just need to get away from it for a while and then come back uh, to decide what uh, what's going to look best. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on doing the uh, the blending coat for a while until I can go away from it and come back and see what I, how I really think about it. Um, some of these shapes are a lot soft, and I think that, I think I'm gonna chalk that up to. Uh, the water base i was using the comart uh, opaque white and i just think it uh may have i don't know seeped under or did something it just this isn't, isn't isn't as crisp as i would like it to be um okay let's uh let's let's call it there and that looks like where we're going to end it this week um starting the painting that's the fun stuff. Got all of the, the uh, knocks and nicks sanded down and puttied over, I think. Uh, there's always a chance something is going to crop up, but I think uh, for the time being, that's where it is. And we're starting to lay the paint down on the Reliant, and I really want to get through it. Uh, I had a very special uh, pet delivery uh, the other day, and I cannot talk about it. I'm sorry to say I've not been cleared to talk about it. But, uh, oh boy, um, no, not even going to give you a clue, sorry. I'm tempted, I'm so tempted because I'm lousy keeping a secret. Um, but that's going to do it for this week. Uh, I wish I could pick this up and show it to you, but you've just seen it. So uh, until next week when we uh, will be getting a lot more painting done. Uh, it's going to start going really quickly now. Uh, one one would hope at least we're just it's gonna start going pretty good so until next week when we're back at the Reliant you guys be good you be good to each other and we will see you here next time